see is um, Beyond the Eyes by Haley Amohelic. Thank you. Welcome to Creative Writing 101. What does the 101 stand for? <laughs> I have no idea. It just sounds fun and creative like me. Speaking of me, I am Miss Brown, and yes, you are stuck with me for the year. But I promise you, it will be worth it. So, let's set some ground rules. Miss uh, 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 Brown, what are you looking for? Do you, oh, do you need help with something? Yeah, maybe we can help you find your dignity. She's like 60. Ah, <laughs> uh, very funny. Why don't you keep your comments to yourself for once? I will. Once you keep your pussy. <laughs> Brody, oh, have a deal! Please, let's all settle down. <laughs> There's some things I would like to lay out, but if I just give me one second. <laughs> but the class kiss ass is already taken by you. Wow. <laughs> well, aren't you just a. Surplus segment of excrement. <laughs> what? You heard me. You're a surplus segment of excrement. Abby, you speak English. <laughs> so us regular old minorities can understand your white? I mean, your wide vocabulary? <laughs> you're such a piece of shit. <laughs> you're such a piece of shit. What? You're a fucking piece of shit, Rosie! Oh my <laughs> <laughs> the only rule I have for this class is to not be afraid of your emotions. When you're writing, I want you to feel open and free to whatever it is you write. I don't care what language you use, as long as you are writing, writing, writing. Ah. Oh, great. Uh, uh, sorry, ma'am, I couldn't find this room. <laughs> You're a super senior! Oh, oh man! What's that? What's that? What's that? <laughs> Let me guess. Best friends since your parents put you in Little League at an unreasonably young age, and you've grown up on the same block as each other, but you're not just best friends, you're a... Uh, bro. <laughs> More like both their moms got knocked up in high school, so they became BFFs and basically raised two kids that share the same brain. Brody has the right and Chad has the left. Oh, Abby, don't you just say the darkest things. <laughs> Did Daddy forget to teach you manners? <laughs> Bro, I'm Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Neither of your dads weren't just a post-prom kiss gone wild. All right, well, that we could all use some writing right now. So let's begin with an assignment. Uh, everyone take out a piece of paper and a pen or pencil. Yeah. Now, I want everyone to close their eyes. <clears throat> I am sure everyone has heard the quote, you never know what you have in front of you until it's gone. Now, Think about a time where you wanted to tell someone something, but you never got the chance. I want you to write a letter to that person about whatever you want to tell them. Whether it's an apology, or an angry rant, or an I miss you letter. Whatever it may be, just let it all out. I will be taking volunteers to read their letter at the end of class. Now get those emotions out and start writing. Dear teacher, here is an apology letter. An apology for the tardies, the disruption of class, and whatever else Brody and I will get detention for in the future. It's nothing personal. We just, we just like to have fun. Right? All right, Chad, let's stop writing. Let's start writing without talking. Uh, I see a few of you are stuck, so I'm just going to say aloud some questions to get your minds flowing. Uh, who is this person to you? How have they affected your life? Uh, what is something that you have always wanted to tell them, but 
never had the chance or courage to, what would you want them to know? If these were your last words to this person, what would you say? All right, finish up your last words. <coughs> Is there anyone who wants to read the paper, their paper out to the class? I'll give a bonus point. I'll read mine. Ah! The floor is yours, Abigail. Dear, the other one. In all my years of life, I've always strived to be the best at everything, and I like to believe that I've never failed at doing so. <laughs> I never allowed myself to give up. That is, until you. Until you came and took him away. You're always there, but I never thought to think you'd be a competition. You were my friend. You were who I would go to whenever things got rough with me and him. I never thought it'd be you to take him away. But then again, you had his heart all along. You had his heart and you didn't even know it. You still don't know it. <coughs> but I know it. And I hate that I know it, because every day I think about how great we were together and how you just being you overruled everything that him and I stood for. But as hurt as I am, I hope you come to realize that he loves you, and I do pray to God that you'll give him everything that I couldn't, that you'll love him as much as he does you, because I think that everyone deserves love, even you. You may be the other one, but I do strongly wish you take in his love and love him back because I wish he loved me the way he loves you. You stole my man, but I still wish you Yay! going to insult me by a word that stands for someone's sexual orientation? Yeah, because that is the soft shit it's gay as fuck. <laughs> I cannot believe you, you immature. Okay, let's all calm down. Are you kidding me? You're not even going to scold him for his stupidity? Let's just calm down. You're a damn teacher, and you can't even educate your own student about what is right and wrong, about how idiotic and insensitive he is being towards Something that is so relevant in our day and age. It's modern America. Idiotic and sensitive. Modern America? <laughs> uh, America, where we have the freedom of speech, right? Where, where I have the right to say an opinion on what I think is or isn't gay. Eh? Do you not understand that using gay as an insult isn't right? You act like it's such a bad thing for girls to like girls, or guys to like guys, or maybe both. Whatever gender someone attracts is none of your business, nor it is, is it your place to judge. And what if one of your buds liked guys? Huh? <laughs> Would my letter still be gay to you? All right, Abigail, let's just take some deep breaths. Yeah, man, just relax. Just relax. I swear you don't even know how hurtful it is to discriminate on the LGBT community. And you, a teacher, I can't believe you won't Educate this immature ass on how to not judge just because he's uncomfortable with real feelings. <coughs> Especially when there are so many people who are lesbian, gay, bi, or transgender. And it's because of people like you that people who are become afraid to be proud of their identity. Afraid to walk around confidently without people like you to judge. It's a goddamn shame. You're both a goddamn shame. You me, miss. You know I've had enough of your attitude, Abigail. <laughs> I am a, a pretty accepting teacher, but you are overstepping it. You need to sit down and relax. Don't make me get the admin involved. Yeah, totally accepting for a homework. You do realize that there is a possibility that there are students in this class that are gay, right? And you condoning Chad's comments is probably making them feel even more afraid of coming out or being comfortable in their skin. Just a little, a little FYI. Damn, Abby, what? Are you a lesbian or something? 
Uh, I guess Daddy leaving and Brody leaving really got to you, huh? I know, wow, you really hate us men so much that you suicide? Yes. That's enough. <coughs> that's it. Just a, that's enough. So him calling me a lesbian is when it's enough? It wasn't enough when he used being gay as an insult like it's some type of abomination. Ridiculous. That is crazy. Good thing we ended things when you do. Yeah. You are the most insensitive person I have ever met. Abby, Chad, Gus, come on guys. Let it just calm down. I am calm. I, I've been calm. It's abnormal. Abby, you gotta tell the calm down. Abby, you you're all pathetic. Miss, uh, Miss Brown? I'd like to read my letter. Abby, please. All right, Brody. Let's hear it. To the one. <coughs> I never really understood love. My mom said I'd understand once I found the one. The one, it's such a prestigious title. They say it's the one you'll spend the rest of your life with, the one that's going to be by your side through the storms and sunshine, the one that gives you butterflies with the slightest touch, the one that you see your future with and you just can't imagine your life without. They give you hope for the future, they motivate and support you through every obstacle in life, they are there for you every step of the way. Even when things get rocky, they're still there, no matter what. My mom said, together you fit like puzzle pieces. And without the other, you feel empty. I never thought I'd find the one. Well, at least not at this age. I, I thought it'd come later in life. I thought that person would come find me after college or something. But the more I think about college, the more I think about being away from you. And suddenly, I, I feel lost. Just thinking about it makes my heart race, my, my palms begin to sweat, and my stomach starts to turn. I think about all the things we've been through, and it brings tears of happiness to my eyes, but thinking of a life without you, I, I can't. And I finally realized that you're the one. My, my one. And you never know what you have in front of you until it's gone. So just in case I lose you, I just wanted to say, I love you, Chad. <laughs>